السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا خاتم النبيين وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا وبعد قال الله تعالى بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه حياة طيبة ولنجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من كان في قلبه غنى فلا يدره ما لقي من الدنيا أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم حاملا ومصليا ومتوكلا على الله وبعد Respected brothers, elders and sisters in Islam We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us this opportunity in coming today on this blessed day, on this sacred day to perform our Salatul Jumu'ah I hope and pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our coming and may Allah reward us both in dunya and in akhirah. Amongst the many promises that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has attached in the Quran with Iman and with the, perf- the performance of righteous actions one is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared announced and promised that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will favor and privilege such a person with a good life with a blissful life with a prosperous life, with a meaning life, meaningful life, on Iman and A'malu Salihat, on Iman and on righteous deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises, Allah declares, Allah announces that Allah will give such an individual such a person a meaningful life, a blissful life. In this world, every person, every individual is searching for happiness and contentment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't kept contentment and happiness in anything of this world. مَنْ كَانَ لَهُ غِنًا فِي قَلْبِهِ فَلَا يَدُرُّهُ مَا لَقِيَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Whomsoever Allah has blessed with qana'ah, غِنًا contentment in his heart, then no calamity, no difficulty, no adverse situation of this world will depress this individual. Once Fir'aun, he was sitting on his throne and the King of the time, Pharaoh, he was told that a child will be born and you will lose your kingdom on the hands of this child. What he was told? 
that in the future a child will be born and you will lose your authority you will lose your kingdom on the hands of this child scholars have mentioned that from the time Fir'aun had gotten this news happiness joy jubilation was something of the past in his life he could not sleep anymore he was sleep deprived <clears throat> he was food deprived no food after that was delicious to him no drink after that was palatable to him nothing he became depressed Alama ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi a great scholar in the past has mentioned that sadness huzn gham sadness does not appear in the Quran except in the form of forbidding it or negating it today everyone is sad everyone is depressed everyone is unhappy Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself sought refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from sadness Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal huzn one of the dua of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was oh Allah I sought refuge in you from huzn from sadness, from depression. One of the things that makes shaitan happiest the most is to make a person depressed, is to make him have sadness in life. So we have to be optimistic. We have to think good about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should not ruin our happiness or the happiness of someone else by the potential worry or concern that may come in the future. Sometimes you don't know, you may be sleeping and the doors of Jannah may be open for you because of the du'as of someone that you did some good, you brought some happiness and some joy in the life of some individual and that person is remembering you because of that joy and happiness and you remove the depression and the sadness from the life of that person rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned a beautiful hadith inna min afdalil a'mal one of the best deed that a person can do and yudkhila surul ala wajhi akhika is to bring joy and happiness in the life of somebody to remove sorrow to remove difficulty and sadness from the life of someone so going back to the ayah which i have recited allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha whether you be a male or a female you bring iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you coupled your iman with righteous deeds, with good deeds. Allah says, For sure, certainly, definitely, without doubt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give such a person a beautiful, blissful life. That's number one. Number two, wala najziyannahum. And again, with emphasis, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "We will give you the full and the best recompense in akhirah." Now, you may ask the question: What is considered to be a good life? What is a blissful life? What is a happy life? The common perception and the general understanding of a good life is a healthy life and a wealthy life. Isn't that so? Anyone who is enjoying good health 
and is blessed with wealth, according to the general definition, such a person is considered to be living a very good life, a very happy life. And uh, according to the views of society, such a person is happy. But my dear respected brothers and elders, this definition is flawed because of two reasons. Living a healthy and a wealthy life does not constitute happiness in the life of a person. Number one, if you look in the world today and you look at the statistics of suicide, you will be very surprised and very perplexed to discover that suicide is more in the affluent communities than in the poor communities. Switzerland, a country like Switzerland, no one is living in poverty in Switzerland. But it is one of the countries in the world whereby suicide rate is at its peak. It's at its highest. But no one is living a life of poverty. Everyone is living beyond uh, uh, the, the life of a normal individual. If you look into the non-developed nations and into the developed nations, you will find also the suicide rate in the developed nations is more than in the undeveloped nations. So this does not equate happiness. Number two, if you look at all the prophets, the Anbiya alayhim salatu wa taslimat, and the Sahaba, and the pious predecessors, they had iman and a'mal salihat to the greatest level, to its optimum. They were not rich. They were not living a wealthy life. But they had iman and a'mal salihat good deeds in their lives to its optimum, right? The general galaxy of Sahaba and prophets were poor, but they were successful. They had a blissful life. Scholars have mentioned other than a few prophets, other than a few companions, for example, Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam, a, a Nabi and a king, Sayyidina Dawood alayhi salam, a Nabi and a king. But look at the galaxy of prophets. Over 124,000 anbiya came into this world for the guidance of humanity. But majority of them lived and chose to live a poor life. Sahaba, look at the Sahaba, over 124,000 Sahaba. You can count a few on your fingers. Sayyidina Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiyallahu anhu, Sayyidina Zubair bin Awam radiyallahu anhu, just a few companions, they were wealthy. Other than that, majority of the companions and the Sahaba, they were living a poor life. So, number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give a person divine contentment. What a happy life means. What a blissful life means, what a meaningful life means, it does not again mean a healthy life and a wealthy life. It means number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give a person divine contentment. And number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not necessarily privilege an individual with conducive circumstances, with pleasant situations, but rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inspire that person to make peace with that which has been decreed for him by Allah. Whatever Allah has decreed for him, Allah will give him the ability to make peace. You know, in today's time, when a person is going through a trauma in life, some big issue, or issue in a person's marriage life, or issue in a person's domestic life, or professional life. You know, you would go to seek counseling. You would go to seek counseling. 
And sometimes you will have to go for multiple sessions of counseling to remove that issue or that situation from your life. In the case of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'een, they went to one counseling session. If they had any difficulty in their life, if they had problems in their lives, they had only to go to how many? One counseling session. And they went to one person to counsel them. And who was that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would tell them, because Rasulullah would, would tell them to make peace on their situation, but focus in the rewards from Allah. Focus in rewards from Allah. For example, in the time of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Medina, there was a fever that broke out. Fever, a situation, a condition. So many of the companions, they came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they said, Ya Rasulullah, we are victims of this fever. Make dua to Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us shifa. Allah remove this condition from us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, immediately he made dua, raised his hands, made dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of them shifa. They were all cure. After a while, one sister, one sahabiyah, she came to the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I am also having the same condition. I am also having the same situation. But I have a diff another condition. I have something that is called epilepsy. And when I have the dawra of that, sometimes I fall on the ground and I faint. And it's not a pleasant something for me. So, O oh, Nabi of Allah, just as how you made dua to Allah for these other companions to be cured from the fever, make dua to Allah for Allah to give me also shifa for my condition. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he looked at her and he said, Oh my sister, I have two options for you. I have two options for you. Option number one, I raise my hands and I make dua. And if I make dua for you, Allah will give you shifa and cure immediately. You will become like a normal person again. Or option number two, that if you persevere, and you have patience on the condition and on the situation divinely that Allah has put upon you and you make peace with that, then in return for that, Allah will give you Jannah. In return for that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you Jannah. You make the choice. Which one you want? You want me to make dua? You, I'll make dua and Allah will give you shifa. You want to persevere? Make patience, then Allah will give you Jannah. The reply of the Sahabiyah was, Wallahi la aj'al lil jannati badala. I am not going to replace Jannah with anything. I am not going to replace Jannah with anything. I will, whatever Allah has written for me divinely, <coughs> I will persevere and have patience. Now understand one thing. By no means here, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was trying to tell this sahabiya, this sister, that whenever a situation comes upon you, whenever a difficulty comes upon you, you don't seek cure. In Islam, you must. You must seek cure. You must exhaust every avenue of shifa. And after exhausting every avenue, if your situation remains the same, and it does not get better, then you make peace with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in your way. Don't think that, okay, whatever condition Allah has put upon me, sickness-wise or issue-wise, I will make sabr and it will be fine. No, no, it's not like that. You first have to find cure. You have to have solutions. 
And if after cures, if after solutions, if after treatments, if after medicines, your situation and your condition still remains chronic, right? For example, someone is a diabetic, right? That would not go away, right? It wouldn't go away. You may use all the medication you can think about. It will not go away. And you make peace with that. You understand this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you persevere. Insha'Allah in exchange for that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give a person Jannah. One Sahabi, Zayd bin Arqam radiallahu anhu, he was the host of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also in Medina. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes to visit him. He was ailing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for him and gave him words of encouragement. And then he, the Nabi of Allah said to him, O Zayd, I am not so worried about your present condition. Right now, you just have a, you know, a little you know, fever. Your condition is not that bad. You are ailing not, you know, just a little bit. What I am worried that, let me tell you, after I die, uh, Rasulullah is telling him now, that after I die, a condition will come upon you more serious than this one. And I am worried as to how you will react when that time comes. Right now, your, your ailment, your sickness is not so bad. So I'm making dua for you. Allah will give you shifa. But what I am worried about, that after I am gone, a sickness will, something, a condition will come upon you. And what will be that condition? You will lose your vision. Prophet is telling him, what will happen to him in the future? You will lose your eyesight. You will lose your vision. And I don't know how you will react when that time comes. I'm worried as to, as to uh, uh, how you will react. The Sahabi, he said, O Prophet of Allah, إِذَنْ asbil. If you are telling me this, that in the future this will happen to me, then I will persevere and I will accept this from Allah and I will have patience. Even asbir wahtasib. I will have patience in Allah and I will hope for rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and you know this is easy for me to say or for you to say. It is very easy, but someone who is inflicted with a situation or a condition, it's more difficult upon them. It is more difficult upon them. But this Sahabi, he said, إِذَنْ أَصْبِرْ وَحْتَسِبْ O Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when that time comes, and if that time comes, I will have sabr in the decree of Allah, and I will hope for rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِذَنْ تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ وَإِذَنْ تَلْقَ اللَّهُ بِغَيْرِ ذَنْبٍ If that's the case, then let me break the good news to you. Let me tell you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place you into Jannah without any hisab, without any reckoning. And you will meet Allah on the day of Qiyamah without any sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will clean you and cleanse you completely. You know it is said, medically, one of the most, uh, one of the, the second complex organ in the body, the second complex organ in the body after the brain is the eyes. And if someone loses his eyes and his eyesight, you know, it, it's, it's something very, very, very difficult. One companion by the name of Sa'ad bin uh, Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu, he was considered among the Ashara Mubashara, the ten Sahabi who were given the glad tidings of, of Jannah in this world. Sa'ad ibn Waqqas radiyallahu anhu, he had lost his eyesight. He had lost his eyesight. But he was known as Mustajabu Da'wat. Mustajabu Da'wat, that whoever would come to him to make dua, he would raise his hands and he would make dua for that person and immediately Allah will give them, fulfill their need, fulfill their requirements. If they had a problem, Allah will remove the problem. He was Mustajabu Dawah. So one day he, went, he was in Mecca. He traveled for Hajj and he was in Mecca. 
And a lot of people surrounded him and they all came with their request and they were making requests for him to make dua for them. And he was making dua for everyone. So one tabi'i by the name of Abdullah bin Sa'ib, rahmatullahi alayhi, a young man, he comes to him and he said, I find this very strange that this man, his dua is answered by Allah and he is a victim of a condition and he is not making dua for himself for Allah to remove his condition if that was me or you I mean that's what we would have done first I want to be good better first right before I take care of other people so he said this is very complex this is very strange that he's making dua for everybody else Everyone else is being cured and he is not making dua for himself. What is it about? So he went up to him and he said, Can I ask you a question? He said, First, who are you? He said, Ana Qari in Ahlu Mecca. He said, I am the Qari, I'm the well known scholar of Mecca. He said, Oh, I know you very well, you young man, I know you very well. So he said, Go ahead, ask me the question. He said, تَدْعُوا لِهَذَا وَتَدْعُوا لِهَذَا وَلَا تَدْعُوا لِنَفْسِكْ فَرَضَّ اللَّهُ بَسَرَكْ I'm seeing that you're making dua for this person, you're making dua for this person, and you're not making dua for yourself, for Allah to return your eyesight to you. So he said something, he said, listen, يَا بُنَيَّ Oh boy, listen carefully what I have to tell you. قَضَاءُ اللَّهِ إِنِّي أَحْسَنُ مِنْ بَصَرِي the decree of Allah in my favor, the decree of Allah in my favor is better than the returning of my eyesight. I am pleased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me and the situation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put me in. Now, my dear respected brothers and elders, you know, qada and qadar. And decree is something many people is difficult for them to accept. When the ayat of the Quran was revealed, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabina wa yuhibbu mutatahirin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who purify themselves and those who repent to Allah. This ayah was revealed regarding some people in Masjid Quba. In the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala praised them. There's some people in the Quba area, you know Quba was the place where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stayed before he entered into Medina at the time of Hijrah. And there was a masjid there, now Masjid Quba. You go, if you pray to Raka'ah Salah, you, the, the, the reward is equivalent to one accepted Umrah, right? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to visit Quba every Saturday in the morning, mashiyan wa rakiban, sometimes walking and sometimes riding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the, the people of Quba. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went to them and he wanted to know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised these, these sahaba, these companions, what qualities they had in them. So he asked them a question. أَتَرْضَوْنَ بِالْقَضَى أَتَرْضَوْنَ بِالْقَضَى Do you people express happiness on the divine decree of Allah in your favor? There is one hadith of Qudsi in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says مَنْ لَمْ يَرْضَى عَلَى قَضَائِي وَلَمْ يَصْبِرْ عَلَى بَلَائِي فَلْيَتَّخِذْ رَبًّا سِوَائِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those who are not happy with destiny in their favor and those who are not, are not patient and uh, express sabr and bala and difficulties in their lives then let them have another Allah than Allah then I am not their God I am not their Allah siwai. let them have another Allah which means these are things that will come in the life of a person. So going back to what the Prophet ﷺ asked them, 
Are you happy with the decree of Allah in your favor? Atasbiruna al bala. Do you persevere in times of difficulty? Atashkuruna fi rakha. Do you are you really grateful and thankful to Allah in favorable conditions, in favorable situations, in prosperity? Are you are you do you express gratitude to Allah? Three sifat, three qualities. What? Happiness and please on the decree of Allah in your favor. Second, sabr and difficulty in your life. And third, happiness and shukr on unfavorable conditions. They said, Ya Rasulullah, yes. So then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Mu'minuna wa Rabbil Ka'aba. Mu'minuna wa Rabbil Ka'aba. You people are true believers in Allah. You people are those who have true iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's, you know, there's an, a hadith Qudsi, a long hadith Qudsi, I'll just uh, mention the relevant portion of it in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allah draws our attention very seriously and Allah says, فَوَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي I swear by my glory and my might. Allah does not need to swear by His honor, by His majesty, by His glory. But to emphasize a point and to let it penetrate into our minds and our hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَوَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي I swear by my greatness, by my glory and my grandeur. إِنْ رَضِيْتَ بِمَا قَسَمْتُهُ if you as a human being, if you are pleased and happy with the decision of Allah in your favor, whether it be favorable or it be adverse, but you are pleased with the decision and the decree of Allah in your favor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَرَحْتُ قَلْبَكَ وَبَدَنَكَ I will give you comfort in life. I will give you peace of mind in life. Your body, your heart will be at ease and rest. Because you have accepted what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for you. So Allah will give you peace. And if you are not happy and pleased with the decree of Allah, in your favor, and you want something else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears again. And Allah says, فَوَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي I swear by my greatness and my glory and my grandeur, لَأُصَلِّتَنَّ عَلَيْكَ الدُّنْيَا تَرْكُبُ فِيهَا رَكْبُ الْوَحُوشِ فِي الْبَرِّ I will let loose the world upon you. I will let loose the world upon you and you will run helter-skelter in the world like wild animals run in the jungle. Because you are not pleased with what Allah has given to you. So Allah says, you want more? Dunya. I will let loose the dunya upon you. And it will take you in such that you will be like wild beasts, like wild animals running helter-skelter. And in the end, you will only get that which Allah had decreed for you to get. Nothing more. In the end, you will only get that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you. Ya ibn Adam, la tas'alni rizqa ghanin. Oh my servants, do not ask me for tomorrow's sustenance. Because I do not ask you for tomorrow's actions. When you are not required by me to produce tomorrow's actions, then why are you asking me for tomorrow's risk and tomorrow's provision? Allah says, Oh my servants, I love you. I love you. Allah is saying, I love you. It is my right upon you that re, you reciprocate the same love to me. You love me. And when you love me, 
when you claim that you love me, you will be happy and pleased on my decree in your favor. My dear respected brothers and elders, tension, depression, frustration has become the order of the day. You look at every second person, he is frustrated because of something or the other. He is depressed of something or the other. Happiness, joy, prosperity is something of the past. The only way, the only way a person can avert financial depression is to convince himself and is to convince yourself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the razaq. That Allah is the sustainer. Allah is the provider. Allah is the nourisher. Allah is the cherisher. If you understand this, that everything is in the control of Allah, then even financial depression you will able to avert. Modern day poverty is that in the midst of affluence, there is no joy. That is modern day poverty. You may have the best home. You may have the best house. You may have the best car. You may have the best of the best in your life. But still, there is no joy. There is no happiness in your life. These are all material things. You know what they say? Money can buy a house, but it cannot buy a home. Money can buy bed, but it cannot buy sleep. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, and one of the greatest contributing factor to tension, to depression and frustration is sins. It's the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man who disobeys Allah, apparently you may see him happy, but internally he's messed up. Internally he's messed up. Because that is one of the greatest contributing factor. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being on a person's side does not necessarily mean that you can be sailing in the ocean with no waves. It does not mean that. It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on your side, but you may be in a ship with no storm, but your ship will not sink. What does that mean? It does not mean you are a practicing Muslim and you are obeying Allah, so problems will not come to you. Problems will come. This is part of life. But what it means when situation comes, when difficulties comes, when sickness comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give a person the ability to deal with that accordingly. Allah will give you the ability to deal with it, inshallah. You know, there's one dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma inni as'aluka an taj'ala kulla qada'in qada'ituhu li khayr. O oh Allah, I, I ask you to make whatever you have decreed in my favor to be good and to be best for me. What, what removes depression? What removes sorrow? What removes difficulty? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sometimes he had huzn, he had gham, he had worry in his heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the ayah. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا صَبَرُوا The Prophet ﷺ, because the people, he had so much of worry and concern for the people that they were not accepting Allah and the message of Allah that this will hurt him. This will hurt his heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ Two things Allah mentions in this ayah. فَسَبِّ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ Celebrate the praises of Allah in abundance. وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ and pray in abundance. So two things remove problems in life and difficulty. One, dhikr of Allah in abundance. Allah says that in this ayah. Dhikr of Allah in abundance and what? Salah. Salah removes these things. You know, sometimes uh, people, some people are not fortunate enough, you know, to have their children Alive. You will find people who sometimes who have just gotten married and they got children, their children may die in childhood. Many you will find like that. 
Many you will find like that. And uh, when people loses their children in childhood, sometimes the mother especially, she goes in depression. You know, she takes it on. And the Prophet ﷺ tells us something very amazing about this. Something very beautiful. He says that, يَجِيءُ الْأَطْفَالُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ عِنْدَ أَرْضِ الْخَلَائِقِ يَوْمَ الْحِسَابِ All those children that anyone has had lost in childhood, before puberty, right? All those children will come on the day of Qiyamah. They will come on the Maidan of Hashar on the day of Qiyamah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell Jibreel, O oh Jibreel, take all these children into Jannah. Take all these children into Jannah. Their place is Jannah. Because they were all ma'sumeen. They were sinless. They died sinless. The Jibreel would be taking them into Jannah. And when they would reach the, 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 the door of Jannah, they all will stop. They all will stop. And they would say, we are not going further. We are not going to go in. We're going to stay here. So Jibreel السلام, will ask why. Their answer will be, لا ندخل حتى يدخل آباءنا في الجنة. We're gonna only go into Jannah if our parents goes with us together. We're gonna only go if our parents go with us together. Now this is a problem. Jibril alayhi salam will get this and he'll come back to Allah and he will say, oh Allah, this is what these children are saying. They don't want to go into Jannah. You command me to take them into Jannah. They stop there and they're not moving. This is what. You know, you know when a child throws a tantrum, when a child throws a tantrum, no matter how hard the parents are, they give in. <laughs> you know that? If your child wants something and your child is crying and crying, you may say, no, I'm not going to give you. No, I'm not going to give you. No, I'm not going to give you. Three times, four times, five times, the sixth time you're going to say, okay, you're going to get it. You give in to your children's tantrums, right? When they throw tantrums. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell Jibreel, go back and tell them that their parents cannot go with them together in Jannah because their parents did many wrongs in their lives and they have to give hisab and accountability for their wrongs that they did. So Jibreel alayhi salam will go back and he will tell them he will tell them that this is what Allah is saying. So Allah will, they will hear a very loud sound and a very loud cry. And Allah will ask Jibreel, Ma sayha? Where is this loud sound coming from? Where is this loud cry coming from? Jibreel would say, Oh Allah, Ya Rab Ha'ulay Adfalul Muslimin. This is the cry of the children. They are still resisting. They are not going to go into Jannah unless their parents goes with them together. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, okay, today is their day, I give in. I give in to them. Tell them to take their parents along with them into Jannah. Tell them, tell them to take their parents along with them into Jannah. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, do not have negativity with Allah. Do not harbor, you know, negative perceptions about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why me? Why not someone else? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put a situation on me? No, no. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in our way, we accept it that it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, he lost his, his concert, Fatima radiallahu anha, and before Fatima radiallahu anha, he had lost Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, speaking about a'mal, you know, iman and a'mal, I remember one thing about Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu anha. You know, she used to do a lot of a'mal, a lot of amal. It is said, something that whereby we all can practice. And I'm going to tell you this today. Take this amal when you go home and practice it, inshallah. This is from the hadith of the Nabi of Allah. We all want rizq. We all want sustenance. That's why we are working for day in, day out. Two jobs, three jobs. Allah will put barakah in your sustenance if you do three things. Very simple things. Three things. 
Solve your problems through a'mal. One, when you enter into your home, whether you are a man or a woman, when you enter into your home, you are going home now, you open your door and you enter. Enter your home with assalamu alaikum. Whether someone is in the house or no one is in the house, enter with salam. Say assalamu alaikum. First thing, okay? After saying salamu alaikum, sallu ala nabi once. Send durood on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once. Any durood you can recite. Even the smallest durood, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you can remember the long one. Say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And thirdly, thirdly, recite Surah Al-Ikhlas with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad. You do these three things, three simple things. Enter your home with salam. After that, durood on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Surah Al-Ikhlas once. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, risk and sustenance will come to you breaking your doors and entering into your home. It will come to you in such a way that it will break your door and enter into your home. Which means definitely you will get your risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through amal. Through amal. Huh? Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu anha, she used to do amal. I will, I will just mention one amal of her. Once, uh, her two sons were sick. I have five minutes more, right? Her two sons were sick. Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein radiallahu anhu. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to visit them. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told her, O Fatima, make a promise with Allah, which we call nazar. Make a prom vow with Allah, make an oath with Allah that if these Allah give them shifa, you will keep fast for three days. You will fast for three days. So both husband and wife, Ali radiallahu anhu, Fatima radiallahu anha, they said, okay, we are making this promise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the two children shifa. Allah give them cure. Hassan and Hussein, they were cured. So when now they are cured that you have to fulfill this promise. Like if you made a promise that I will do this after fulfilling this, after your, your need is fulfilled, you have to, you have to complete that. So they, they said we have to fast. The very first day, you know Fatima radiallahu anha used to work, the queen of Jannah used to work. What she would do, she would take wool from a Jewish person by the name of Shem'un and she would clean it, clean the wool and give it back to him. And whatever were the wages from that, he would give it in the form of flour. He would give it in the form of flour. So she fasted for the whole day, the first day. And she was cleaning wool. She got a little bit of, of flour and she made a few bread for them to break fast. Khubz bread. Both husband and wife sat to break fast. Ali and Fatima radiallahu anha. Subhanallah. A time of iftar. Nothing more to eat, just a few bread. Someone came knocking at the door. I am a miskeen. Give me something in the name of Allah. Who was that miskeen? Whether a Muslim or a non-Muslim, it was not. Ma it didn't matter. Give me something in the name of Allah. Husband is looking at wife. Wife is looking at husband. Nothing else to eat. We fasted the whole day. They took everything and give it to them. And they they broke their fast with with dates and water. Second day, the same. Episode, the same scenario, the same thing happened. Fasted the whole day. Make some roti to break fast in the evening. This time a yatim came, an orphan. Give something in the name of Allah. Give something in the name of Allah. They took everything, give it away. Second day also, nothing to eat. Nothing to eat, husband and wife. Third day, the exact thing happened. Third day, because they had to fast for three days. The exact thing happened. They sat to break their fast the third day. A captive of war came that was just released from Badr. The, the, the captives of Badr. Give me something in the name of Allah. Allahu Akbar. They took everything and gave it. Three days, nothing to eat. Now Fatima radiallahu anha is feeble, weak, nothing to eat for three days. She could not get up anymore. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came and he saw her 
and he went and he embraced her and both father and daughter having a moment crying and weeping and while they're crying and weeping Allah revealed ayat from the Quran Allah revealed ayah now see that amal caused ayat to reveal وَيُتْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينَ وَيَتِيمَ وَأَسِيرَ Allah revealed ayah in the same tartib Surah al in the same tartib in the same sweet sequence how they, how they fed the, 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 the miskin and then the yatim and then the asir in, exactly like that Allah revealed those ayah and those ayah would be recited and read by me and you and every Muslim till qiyamah till qiyamah that is solving problems through a'mal so to conclude, to conclude, my dear respected brothers and elders, a blissful life, a meaningful life, a beautiful life does not mean a healthy life and a wealthy life. It means that Allah will give you contentment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the ability to make peace with situations in your life. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al wa nafa'na wa iyyakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-hakim.